Neonatal abstinence syndrome, or in short, NAS. I will give you definition of this condition. I will talk about different substances causing withdrawal symptoms in newborn babies. And finally, I will discuss how we evaluate newborn babies, what kind of symptoms they develop, and how we treat neonatal abstinence syndrome in newborn babies. A lot of information in this one episode about NAS. As a reminder, I'm Dr. Wisniewski and this is my channel Neopet Edu. This channel's purpose is to educate you and inform you about various medical issues affecting premature babies, full-term newborns and infants up to one year of age. Neonatal abstinence syndrome, or in short NAS, is defined as a condition that develops in newborn baby after birth as a consequence of their exposure during pregnancy to opioid substances. Some experts argue that other substances, such as antidepressants medications and sleeping pills such as benzodiazepines, also can cause withdrawal symptoms. But this is debatable. We know though for sure that if those sleeping pills or antidepressants are used together with opioids during pregnancy, those babies will have more severe withdrawal symptoms. So there is some association and connection, but we don't know if antidepressants or benzodiazepines alone cause withdrawal symptoms in newborn babies. Medications or substances that can cause withdrawal symptoms are such as morphine, fentanyl, oxycodone, oxycontin, Percocet, Vicodin, and many others. Uh, unfortunately, many of those medications, especially those pain pills such as oxycodone, oxycontin, Percocet, are widely prescribed for even minor pains, such as by dentist after extraction of the tooth or some minor traumas. Nowadays, though, doctors are more wise about it and they don't give them that easily as it used to be in the past. But unfortunately, I have to say that doctors had some part in promoting um, wide use of opioid substances for pain control. When opioid substances are used chronically, the human body gets used to that and becomes dependent on it. And then when they try to stop it, people develop withdrawal symptoms. And the same happens to newborn babies. When newborn babies are exposed chronically during pregnancy to opioid substances, they get used to that. They become dependent. And then after birth, when they are cut off drastically, suddenly, from those substances, their body responds in the way that they develop withdrawal symptoms. How common is neonatal abstinence syndrome in the United States? Every year we treat approximately 14,000 of newborn babies for neonatal abstinence syndrome in United States hospitals. Each hospitalization may cost up to $54,000 per treated baby. We also know that approximately 5% of all pregnancies are with exposure to illicit substances. And also we know that among babies who are exposed to opioid substances during pregnancy, 60 to 80% of them will develop at least mild withdrawal symptoms after they are born. How we evaluate babies with neonatal symptoms? First of all, we should determine what kind of exposure baby had during pregnancy. We can do it from talking to other providers that were taking care of the mother during pregnancy. Especially if she was in the treatment program for her addiction, we will know exactly what her exposure was and also how she was treated for that addiction, because most likely treatment during pregnancy was also by using opioid substances such as methadone and buprenorphine, and those two substances as well can cause withdrawal symptoms in newborn babies. If we don't have exact history or detailed history about mother during her pregnancy, we can send toxicology testing using samples from the baby, such as urine, Meconium, meconium is a name for first bowel movement in the baby. And also we can use cord, um, umbilical cord. Uh, in rare situations, particularly in forensic examination, we can also use nails and hair, but it's not really used in clinical situations. The other way to evaluate baby is to watch for symptoms of withdrawal. And symptoms of withdrawal in neonatal abstinence syndrome 
are pretty much the same what you would expect in withdrawing adult person. Babies may be very irritable, may cry a lot, may be difficult to console. They may have problems with feeding, they will have vomiting, they will not be gaining weight, they may have diarrhea. Also, those babies may have a lot of sweating, increased body temperature, heart rate, respiratory rate, and also high blood pressure. In many situations, they will have increased muscle tone, tremors, and rarely they may even have seizures. So there is a great range of symptoms and also great range in severity how they present in any individual baby. So it's very important to watch those babies very carefully. And it's typical for those babies to stay a little bit longer in the hospital than it would be for normal, regular, healthy newborn babies because those symptoms develop gradually and they also get worse gradually. So it will take some time for physicians and healthcare workers to decide whether those symptoms already reached peak and they plateaued or they are getting better or they still might get worse. So it wouldn't be wise to send babies home with high likelihood that symptoms are still getting worse. Because if baby is suffering a lot, those babies need some help and treatment. How we treat babies with neonatal abstinence syndrome? We use two approaches. First is non-pharmacologic, the most important. And then the second, if needed, we can use medications to treat neonatal abstinence syndrome in newborn baby. So during that non-pharmacologic phase, which should last regardless whether we use medications or not, we should provide the most comforting environment to that baby that we can. Ideally, mother should stay with the baby in private room. We should minimize any kind of distractions, noises, or stimulation to the baby. She should hold baby and bond with her baby as much as she can. And if she is in treatment program for her addiction, we would encourage her to breastfeed her baby. It's been shown that staying mother staying with the baby in private room and breastfeeding helps significantly in controlling withdrawal symptoms. If those controlling measures are not enough and baby requires treatment, we utilize different medications and those are morphine, methadone, clonidine, phenobarbital, and in the future most likely it will be also buprenorphine. But those medications should not be started right away and should only be started on the baby if baby cannot be controlled with non-pharmacologic measures, which are the most important in treating newborn babies with NAS. The important question always is when the baby with neonatal abstinence syndrome can go home, can be discharged home. There are two major criteria that needs to be met. First is social issue, and second is medical issues. So social issues need to be resolved. What I mean by that, we have to be sure that baby has safe home environment to go to, and also baby has parents who are safe caretakers, meaning they are not involved in active illegal drug use. Most of the time when baby is born with NAS, health workers have obligation to notify social services about this case. And social worker or social services will review situation to make sure that parents will be allowed to take that baby home and also to be sure that parents have enough resources at home to take care of that baby. The medical issues also need to be resolved before sending such baby home. Baby need to have stable vital signs, needs to be able to eat well on a regular basis with consistent weight gain, and withdrawal symptoms should have been resolved by now or at least stable, so it is safe to send that baby home. Finally, we need to have an appointment prior to discharging this baby home with primary doctor who will ensure that this baby continues gaining weight and doing well after discharge. If you would like to know more about neonatal abstinence syndrome, particularly if you want to know what you can do for baby while in the hospital as a mother or father, please check out my other video in this series. Also, if you are interested in health issues affecting premature babies, full-term babies or infants up to one year of age, subscribe to this channel. Finally, I have some other offers for you 
and you can check them out on my Facebook page, Neoped Edu, or my website, neopededu.com. You will find details down below in description to this video.